They tryna turn Trenton into Baby Flint Been signs about depression on the billboards ever since A hundred years ago we was lynched Now they use germ warfare to kill us I'm convinced, got the evidence I look around and it's evident They go down to City Hall and see so much negligence Real art is intelligent A true artist sends messages that speak to your intelligence They fall and die so I can do my thing Not to get drunk and high or join no gang I will not let none of you die in vain For my people I bang, bang, bang My ancestors been through so much pain I don't let them die in vain My ancestors been through so much pain I don't let them die in vain I rep for you in everything I do I rep for you in every place I go I rep for you in everything I do In every place I go They say post-traumatic slavery disorders fake But I just tell them all to wake up Everything we went through What a way down a rape, bro It's an all genetic makeup So I am my ancestors From block to block Let's build like it's Tetris We must unite, link up like a necklace They fought and died and we disrespected So so I come to correct it The legacy they left I protected We only think about self and neglected You're African but get you rejected no. My ancestors been through so much pain I don't let them die in vain My ancestors been through so much pain I don't let them die in vain I rep for you in everything I do I rep for you in every place I go I rep for you in everything I do In every place I go I do I go Peace and blessings, peace, 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 peace and blessings. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Bilal Hassan here, live and direct on the Freedom Exchange, your cultural expression for social dignity and community empowerment and development. With my co-host here. Uh, Brother Dean here, welcome. Yes, Brother Dean. Check it out. Our brother Dean here. We're live here at the uh, Digital um, Learning uh, Center here in Central PA, and we are uh, pleased to come back here today for part two of the Balalian Night in the Museum, as we bring to you a exclusive. Uh, as we saw last night um, with Brother Lester, uh, we had a very good uh, uh, overall view of the Nation of Islam to from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to the, pre uh, to the present, uh, uh, the late Imam Warafi Muhammad. May Allah forgive them both for sending the grand station in paradise. And now we're here for a more specific, a more specific take in uh, the Nation of Islam's influence and development here in the city of York, PA, central PA here in the beautiful city of York. I am with um, our dear beloved who's been in this community for a while and living here in York for a while, Brother Yahya. And Brother Yahya will allow him to come forward and introduce himself. Brother Yahya? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, Brother Yahya Bilal. Uh, most of us know me as Brother John. I was born John Jameson in this city in um, 1948 and uh, grew up in the city and uh, attended school here in the city, uh, attended William Penn uh, Industrial Course, and I wanted to be a uh, contractor. I wanted to build houses, and uh, uh, I went to William Penn Industrial Course, and I was one of the outstanding students in the, uh, in the class, but as, as fate has it, um, I ended up falling in love <laughs> with my high school sweetheart, and things change, as we say in Islam. Uh, man plans and Allah plans, 
My law is the best of plans. And uh, my life has followed the plan that God has given me. And I'm very grateful for the uh, number of years that I've been on the planet Earth. And I'd just like to share with you a little bit of the history of um, Islam in Europe and Pennsylvania. So we have here some uh, letters and uh, other, you mentioned you wanted to build houses and different things like that. So we're going to first begin here, uh, Brother Yahya, yeah, and start wherever you want to start. Okay. Now, in, in, 19, um, in 1972, I, um, I had a brother by the name of Freddie. He was my younger brother, and he, um, he was sort of in and out of the penitentiary. He had little trouble, problems uh, uh, staying in line with the law. But in his little stint in the uh, penitentiary, he was introduced to Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he was very articulate, and he actually became a minister in the uh, penitentiary at Credible, I believe. And quite naturally, as we would go visit him, mm -hmm. he would tell us, you know, mm -hmm. about Islam mm -hmm. and the Army Black Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And he encouraged us to attend a Muhammad's temple. Mm -hmm. And as fate would have it, there was a brother uh, out of Richmond, Virginia, by the name of uh, Sylvester, mm -hmm. Sylvester Lee. And he was, uh, for some reason, I, I'm not sure the reason why he wanted to come to York, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but I have a letter here that uh, he wrote, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and this letter is dated June 12, 1969, so it's in the late 60s. And the letter that he wrote to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he was asking permission to uh, come to York mm -hmm. and establish a temple. Mm. And this letter reads, in 1969, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad answered him, and he said, quite naturally, with the greetings, I salam alaykum, mm -hmm. in the name of Allah, the most, our most merciful Savior, our deliver, deliverer, who came in the first of the Master of Lord, to whom all praises be forever, master of the day of judgment, for law alone do we seek, submit, and seek refuge. And his answer to the Sylvester was, your letter of June 6, 1969 is in hand. And his answer was, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is answering Sylvester's letter. I have no objection of you of your getting the teachings into your Pennsylvania. I have been through there several times, long years ago. It is a pretty large town. Go right ahead and try to sell paper there and see how that reacts, see how that reacts on the population. But do not get right down into the heart of the city. Go among the neighborhoods where our people live. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, this, this is why brothers get in trouble selling Muhammad's speech. Go right down to the town in the heart of the city, and that's where they run into trouble. So he was instructing the brother, start selling paper in the, uh, among our people. So Sylvester did that. And he established, and there are three, these are three different letters that he received from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad instructing him how to start a uh, temple here in York. And he told him to start in your home. So that's what Brother Sylvester did. He, uh, he uh, turned his basement into a temple. He uh, paneled it and put in the floor, and he started holding meetings there. And that was in 1970. What number was the temple? Was this temple? We didn't have a temple. We were just the uh, Muhammad's Temple of York, Pennsylvania. We never did receive a number, but we went under the, the, the 
the uh, name of Muhammad's Temple of York, Pennsylvania. And he started at that on uh, 13 West Maple Street in his home. And then we did end up moving from there to a, uh, and I, I attended the temple in his home as a lot of the other um, people in York did. And then we finally uh, got a building on uh, 400 West College Avenue. And we, we renovated that and turned that into Muhammad's Temple of York, Pennsylvania. So um, these are like a you know a treasure. It's part of the uh, history of uh, Islam in York, Pennsylvania. And he recruited a lot of people in the city. A lot of people went down in his little basement where he delivered the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he got a lot of converts. And I came into the temple in uh, 1972. And uh, I've been practicing Islam since then. That's like 40, 48 something years ago. And I have, uh, I have uh, uh, not only that, I have uh, talked to my children and neighbors and a lot of friends. And they, uh, they have known that my family, the Jamison family, mm -hmm. a lot of our family members joined the temple here in York, Pennsylvania. And most temples in any, most of the cities, you have a couple of what you call uh, strong families that really do a lot of the work in the temple. You have a lot of people come and go, but there's generally a handful of families that really support the temple, do the work, and propagate the religion. And I was, my family, and there's about three other really strong family that uh, accepted the teaching and started to spread Islam in York, Pennsylvania. So um, the, uh, the uh, temple, we be asked, after we moved over to um, uh, 400 West, West College Avenue corner property, we actually purchased the property renovated it and uh, established a temple there. And uh, this was in 1972 that I came in. And then our temple actually began to really, really grow. And uh, do you know how many, roughly how many members of the temple, about this specific temple here? We may have had, we may have had about 150 uh, people. Mm -hmm. actually supporting the temple mm -hmm. and coming and going on a regular basis. And back then, you wrote a letter, and you, that's how you became a member. You had to write a letter to the Alam Elijah Muhammad, accepting this song. And uh, we had a very we had a very strong, our temple actually really grew here in New York. And we uh, followed all the programs that the uh, Nation of Islam was uh, 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 propagating, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, we uh, established a school. We actually took our children out of the public school, but that's one thing that the Nation of Islam thrived on: mm -hmm. teach our own children. Mm -hmm. And um, we ran into a little problem with the uh, York City School Board, and uh, I became I became the secretary of the temple. Mm -hmm. After being there a while, Sylvester uh, asked me to become the secretary. So I was the secretary of the temple here in York. And there was another brother by the name of uh, Brother uh, Benjamin Nolan, and then he converted, he changed his name to uh, Jamil Sahar. And uh, he took his children out. My sister took our, her children out. And we established a school here in York, Pennsylvania. And we did run into a little problem with the uh, New York City School Board. They uh, actually arrested uh, Brother Jamil, mm. formerly Benjamin Nolan. They actually arrested him for not returning his children to the city school district. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so me and Brother Sylvester, we, uh, we went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, to the Department of Education. And we explained to them what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the uh, Department 
Department of Education explained, we explained to them, and they said as long as we had people with a high school education, and long as we uh, uh, educated them in the uh, English language, mm -hmm. we were uh, free to establish the temple. And then they gave us a letter from the Department of Education of Pennsylvania. They gave us a letter. We took that letter back to New York City School District and gave it to them. And then we didn't have any more trouble out of the uh, New York City School District. They did try to put a little stumbling block in there. But it shows you that the, uh, the, uh, the program that the Army Life Muhammad was teaching mm -hmm. us to do for self, educate our children, and uh, uh, that way they would see us teaching our children, showing the interest in our children, just like back when there was segregation, when we had black teachers, black schools, teaching black children. The uh, education was more, the, the children were more absorbent of the education when they had somebody that they knew was interested in it. And uh, that, that school produced, uh, you'd be surprised, the life that our children are leading now that came from that education in the uh, Temple Islam School at 400 West College Avenue. Was it a... Uh... A weekend school or no, it was the University every, of Islam? It was the University of Islam, and we were open five days a week. Nice. Nice. We had education every day. Okay. And uh, it worked out very well. I, I actually, you know how we fill in. Mm -hmm. I was one of the school teachers, mm -hmm. and I had high school education. And mm -hmm. like we said, we could just teach them what we knew. Mm -hmm. That would help them. And the children took to it like me. They took to it like me. They really, really enjoyed it. And we had graduations and all those other things. And uh, the one thing that I, I want to, I don't know if I can show it to you. Yeah. Before, but, uh, we, before, before we, we get there. before we get there, uh, just want to hold your thought. Just want to want us to go through these all these stories. Yes, okay. these stories that relates to construction. I think construction here, I think development. Right. So, want right. to give us a chance and, to. And, and talk one about of this. the things that the Honorable Ibn Muhammad taught us about doing for self. That was a big thing that, you know, the Nation of Islam taught. So I grabbed on to that. Mm -hmm. Now, here I was working at Caterpillar Tractor. Mm -hmm. had a good first paying mm -hmm. job. Caterpillar was one mm -hmm. of the best paying jobs that they had in the city. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I took that teachings of doing for self, and I struck out and went to build a business. Now... What I did was, all the money that I made, I, I lived off of 40 hours. All the money that I made that was overtime and extra money, I set it aside to establish my business. Because I knew we weren't going to get any, I wasn't going to get any loans from the bank for no business loans. I could have got money to get a car, or something like that, mm -hmm. but I wasn't going to get any money for a business. So I saved all my overtime money. And I ran into this building here. It was on the um, north side of the city on North Persian Avenue. And it was a building that was uh, it used to be an old butcher shop. And it had got burned out during the riot. Mm -hmm. So I saved my little money and I purchased that building. I purchased that building and that building came along with a three-unit apartment complex. A three-unit apartment complex, and it was a six-car garage. So that was one complex that I purchased. And I purchased it one year, and it took me a whole year, me a whole year to open up. I'm just giving you a history of how, by uh, believing in the faith of Islam, doing for self, I was able to establish a business. And I established a business. After one year, we opened up and we called Brother John's Grocery. And Brother John's Grocery was very, very, very successful. And what I did, I hired people from the uh, from the neighborhood. It was close to the uh, Parkway uh, housing development, so I employed people from the neighborhood. 
and most of the children went to that to the store. And because of this success, the um, the Europe Daily Record um, they uh, wrote an article telling the story of Black history in the community, and they put a picture in the paper of uh, me and my wife. Um, this is my second wife. Me and my first wife we had eight children, but after 18 years, that fell apart, and I married a second time. And they did a bit of a story of um, Brother John Crowley. They highlighted the features of the store and that it was a Muslim store. And the fact that I didn't sell cigarettes, pop papers, Billy Blunts. Mm -hmm. So no tobacco products, mm -hmm. no pork at all. Mm -hmm. We sold none of those products. Yet, Brother John Crowley is one of the most successful businesses, neighborhood stores in the city of New York. And you can find that that article was written on uh, April 6, 2014, in the New York Daily Record. And by me working at running that store, Caterpillar Tractor, big employer, the human relations department, he saw the article in the newspaper about Brother John Grocery, and I had what they call a learn and earn program. What I would do every marking period, I would give the children, first marking period, I give them a nickel for every A on the report card. And second marking period, a dime. Third marking period, 15 cents. Fourth marking period, the children were given a quarter for all the A's on the report card. It was called uh, a learn and earn program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have children lined up around the block. So, Caterpillar in their courier, their monthly courier, they did an article that John Jameson, a caring brother. And they did an article about my learn and earn program. And um, that was in Caterpillar's uh, courier. And that was in August 1984. So these are historical documents, actually. These, these things are, you know, you can mm -hmm. get to check them down in history for the contribution that. Uh, Brother John Grocery did. And I ran that store in spite of working at Caterpillar. I kept my job at Caterpillar. I worked full time at Caterpillar and I managed that store. God blessed me to manage that store from a distance. And we were in business for over 24 years, along with uh, working at Caterpillar Track. So that's a little, that's a, a, an idea of what. Uh, the Nation of Islam did for me and my family and how they influenced the community at large. Mm -hmm. Now, I have uh, eight natural children and uh, out of my eight natural children, five of my children are in business for themselves in this city. They followed their footsteps and the example that I try to set for them and I tell people it wasn't no magic. All I was doing was being a father to my children mm -hmm. and setting an example. Mm -hmm. Five of my children have uh, businesses in this city and they make a living off. They don't work for anybody else. And they employ people. A lot of children that grew up with them, they know the uh, Jamison are known for business. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, one of that's what the Honorable Black Muhammad taught us to do. Do it for sale, go and bend it for yourself. And I, I tell people, I'm going to live an example that it works. And we say the young African American males, they, you know, they give them a, a bad rap, but with proper guidance, a father figure, a mother figure, we can guide our children to do more than just hang around on the street corner. And they are now in business for themselves, and they're well known. They have well known business in the city. Now, it's all a product of joining the nation in this um, going for sale, having the family. Family was very important in the nation in this time. The men were encouraged to take care of your family, be men, clean yourselves up, uh, strong moral principles. And by following that, following that, I'm, I'm
a living example, and my family is a living example of the teaching of the Honorable Dr. Thomas work. So that's a little, little pat on the back, so to speak, for myself. But it, it, it shows you that if you commit yourself to something, you can you can do it. And uh, uh, that was a that was a product of the teachings of the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Dr. Muhammad. Excellent. So what do we have here in the middle here? We have some more more footage that we would like to show. Yeah. What we have over here, mm -hmm. what we have over here is one of the uh, things that was taught in the Nation of Islam was that we have Asia and Africa and we have African Americans or blacks in the United States bridging the gap between between the blacks of Asia, the blacks of Africa, and we have blacks in America uniting. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the um, uh, pictures that was really prevalent in the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. So this is what something that we had hanging in our in our uh, temple mm -hmm. and uh, at 400 West College in Avenue. And there's a picture of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's last sermon before he passed. And these are some of the students that was in our high school. And um, um, there's a picture on here of some of the early converts. Mm -hmm. We even had Joe Tex, the singer Joe Tex, that was very popular. He uh, converted to Islam and he visited York. And uh, we had a uh, we had a big turnout for him to speak up the uh, old Christmas Attic Center. So these are some of the highlights. And then there's a picture here where we have a couple people who wrote their letters, and they all mailed them out together to uh, be accepted in the nation of Islam. And then one of the pictures here is the, uh, the temple in Chicago, Illinois, Temple Number Two. Mm -hmm. That was a big. Um, uh, temple that we purchased, mm -hmm. and then you have some of the brothers in the Nation of Islam, the Nation of Islam uniform, mm -hmm. and uh, this is sort of just like a some tale, mm -hmm. some of the um, what went on in York, and then the minister of York he noted that how Prince of York was laid out. York was laid out in 1741 by order of the proprietors, the first. Pennsylvania town west of the Susquehanna River. The seal of the, of the Continental Congress, 1977 to 78, birthplace of the Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation were actually drafted here in York, Pennsylvania, in establishing the United States. So York sort of boasts of being the first capital of the United States mm -hmm. because of the drafting of the Articles of the Confederation right here in this city. So York sort of both and say, well, we're actually the capital of the United States. Mm -hmm. So the Article of Confederation was established here in this city. So our minister took note of that mm -hmm. and he put that up mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, uh, show everyone that when you came to York, York was a pretty significant place, and we should take pride in the city of York. And then, and then the uh, the history, mm -hmm. the history that we we uh, are trying to show. Here's a history and a picture of some of the uh, important African Americans that have contributed to this country. Mm -hmm. But I would, if you can see it, this is the ships. Mm -hmm. They brought us over in, a, in this country. A lot of us don't understand that they packed these ships, yep. bringing our people over here. They had us packed like sardines. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine we're laying next to each other like sardines, chained, no restroom break, no, uh, 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 if you if you had to defecate, you defecated where you were at. If 
you got sick to the stomach, right? And there was no take me to the restroom, urinating on each other. The women menstrual periods on each other. Can you imagine the environment that our ancestors went through? You say, well, Brother John, why are you bringing that up? Why are you talking about the horrible condition that we experience? We need to know this history. African-American history is actually American history. It's no, it's not a separate history. Mm -hmm. It's just a part of American history that they left out. Mm -hmm. That's basically all it is. And I say that America, America will not yield. America will not yield with this racism. You know? It will not heal until it faces the history in all of its horror. Till they face that. America without heal. The African American story is a part of American history. And when they kept the history away from us as African Americans, they kept it away from the Caucasian people too. So the Caucasian had no idea what we went through in our struggle. But once they're faced with this horror of women having children, some people, women were children, died. And then when they unloaded them, some of them were dead. So they just threw them overboard. It's a horrible story, but it's an important part of American history. And I always refer this to the Jews and the Holocaust. They have a museum. They do not want the world to forget what they went through. The gas chambers, the horror, the Holocaust. The Jewish community knows how important it is for the world to understand what they went through. And if they see the importance of not letting the world forget that it may never happen again, if they do that, what's wrong with us telling our story in all of its horror? But the world will know what we went through and where we come from. And that's, uh, it, these are some of the things that you guys get a chance to get over here, or we'll, we'll broadcast this on our, as you can see some of these pictures mm -hmm. of how they packed us in the halls of some of these ships for us to get here. And then I have some pictures of the, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Family, family, his children, yes. have pictures of him, yes, and uh, some of the great leaders, Malcolm X and Louis Farrakhan. These are some of the great ministers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, James Shabazz, and Imam Warsi Muhammad. And there's a two important pictures I would like you to uh, see if you ever get a chance to see it. There's a picture of Master Farrakhan Muhammad, the one who came here and taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Honorable Elijah Muhammad's knowledge is not, wasn't from him. It was from a man who came over here mm -hmm. and taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. these teachings. Mm -hmm. And so he sort of resurrected the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad took over the leadership after Master Farrar Muhammad left. I think he spent like three years with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, something mm -hmm. like that, teaching him the teachings. So the teaching that the Honorable Black Muhammad gave us was not his teaching. Mm -hmm. He was a drunk. Mm -hmm. He was a drunk, and he had he had no idea the greatness that he was going to inherit. Mm -hmm. And actually, the story is his wife went and heard Master Farrar Muhammad teach. That's right, Sarah Muhammad. Sarah Muhammad. That's right. She heard. Her, a friend in her invited her mm -hmm. to uh, go to hear Master Farrar Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And she went with the intention of helping her husband. That's right. Because he had a problem with alcohol mm -hmm. and unemployment. You know, unemployment. Mm -hmm. He was suffering the same fate that most of the African American men mm -hmm. were suffering back then, discouraged. Mm -hmm. And Sister Claire Muhammad heard Master Farrar Muhammad teach. She 
went home and thought that, well, this man might be able to help my husband. Right. Because he was talking about black excellence. Right. And she encouraged the Honorable Black Muhammad to go, give me a quick lesson. She encouraged the Honorable Black Muhammad to go here and master for our Muhammad. And when, Matt, when Elijah Muhammad went and heard him mm -hmm. speak, he accepted the teaching that night. And mm -hmm. it is said, when they passed around the collection box for collection, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had 10 cents in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And he gave that 10 cents in mm -hmm. charity. Mm -hmm. And from then on, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. He became one of the loyal followers of Master Farah Muhammad, and he was left to build the nation of Islam. And then, John Rod Muhammad, when his his wife <clears throat> was pregnant with Warthi Muhammad, Wallace Muhammad, Master Farah Muhammad told John Rod Muhammad that the child that you're carrying, uh, Sister Claire, is going to be a boy, and he's going to help. Zayed mm -hmm. Muhammad and his work. These are stories that were told that the honor, that Master Farah Muhammad mm -hmm. told them. So they're saying that Warthi Muhammad's mission was given to the army of Muhammad before he was even born. Mm -hmm. And they were told that he was going to be a special child and he was going to help. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, when the army of Muhammad passed, in 1975, I believe it was, Imam Warfi Muhammad, Wallace Muhammad took over the leadership. And there's a picture that they have where famous yeah, picture with him, famous, famous picture of, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad sitting down, his son, Imam Warfi Muhammad Wallace, then holding the Quran. And uh, match the picture of Rabbi Muhammad on the wall, on the wall in the background. It's right. the famous picture that right. is that we that a lot of people have seen. Thing. Yeah, yeah lot of seen, seen this picture. picture. Yes, and then I heard a little story about when the photographer was getting ready to take mm -hmm. that picture, mm -hmm. and Warfi Muhammad was standing there mm -hmm. next to his father, mm -hmm. and the photographer said, "Well, there's something missing in this picture," mm -hmm. and the photographer suggested that he hold the Quran, yes, in his hand. Absolutely. So that shows you. Now, Farrar, Master Farrar had the Quran. Mm -hmm. Elijah Muhammad brought the teaching, but Warfi Muhammad was the one to bring us into Quran. Mm -hmm. And there's a letter I think they showed before over here yesterday where mm -hmm. the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, I'm not teaching you religion. Right. My responsibility is to clean you, you up, up and get you ready for the get, one that's going to do that. To do the work. To do that work. Yes, and right. his son. That's right. The man Warfi Muhammad. And it, it, it's a. Uh, it's really powerful because when you have a child, how do you know that child is going to follow mm -hmm. in the direction that you want them to go in? You know, you try to guide your children, but praise be to Allah, the man Warfi Muhammad he was educated by his father. He went to some of the greatest Islamic schools. He learned to speak Arabic, interpret Arabic, and he brought us into what we call the Quran. And after the Honorable Muhammad passed in 1975, the man Warthi Muhammad took over the leadership and he began to bring us into what we call Al Islam proper. And that's where we are today. So, and one of the one of the, the uh, first thing that the Honorable Imam, that uh, the man Warthi Muhammad did, W.B. Muhammad, one of the first thing that he started to pro propagate was removing all racial images from worship. Yes, the Cray movement. The Cray movement. The Cray movement of the 80s. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was all around the country. All, all around the country. And later, um, I was uh, reading, there were several chief psychologists, African-American psychologists, I, I forget the names, I was trying to find that research, that actually approved of, they actually said this, this work is highly Highly necessary. He's a psychologist saying that his work is highly necessary just to show how it's just to show how how far ahead thinking, forward thinking the Imam was. Right. Yeah. Very forward thinking, very progressive, that he gave us initiatives like the Cray movement. 
and like the other movements that came after that, um, the other the other movements, the AMCOC, the the you see the collective purchasing, all of these all of these aspects that we we kind of we kind of talked about it yesterday, but Lester kind of talking about it today. Obviously, we don't have all all, all of the time in the world to right. spend to dissect all of those things, but most importantly, um, the Imam spent a lot of time again uh, breaking this down here, his father and the nation of Islam, uh, which was very important because of the transition. Right. You know, and but uh, but if you could explain, you came in in 72. My father also came in 72. So you guys were a little, I won't say late, but technically for those who were obviously in it back then in the 40s, somewhere in the 40s right. and 50s, they were very active. Right. So for you all, can you, could, for you personally, could you tell the audience how much um, the transition affected you? Because a lot of Believers, quite frankly, did not make a transition right. from the right. of Elijah Muhammad's passing and to, up into Muhammad. Muhammad. Can you explain and how that, that transition was? That was, the, that was the great, great um, mm -hmm. uh, conflict, so to speak, mm -hmm. we had in the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God, I attended all the what mm -hmm. we call Savior Day back then. Sure. I attended all the Savior Day mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be, I was in the audience okay. when uh, Wallace D. Muhammad, after his father passing, the next day, Wallace D. Muhammad, Wallace D. Muhammad became the leader. Right. I was in the audience. I was there. I witnessed it, where they lifted up mm -hmm. Wallace D. Muhammad mm -hmm. as the new leader, lead the nation of Islam. Everybody knew that he was prepared for the mission. Mm -hmm. I think there's a post of yes. Muhammad speak newspaper. Says, yes, yes, he's there. Mm -hmm. He said, I was born for the mission. That's so right. all the ministers at that time got behind Wallace Steve Muhammad. Now, the transition, what we call a transition came. Mm -hmm. Imam Ward D. Muhammad start, started to take us into Islam proper. Mm -hmm. Our Islam proper. He removed all the chairs out of the temple. Yeah, I heard that was hard for people because it's like, mm -hmm. well, all the chairs gone. We're going to be sitting on the floor. Right. On the carpet. On the carpet. <laughs> We're going to learn salat Properly. Properly. Because mm -hmm. the way we were praying, we were standing up praying. Correct. There's a, but, picture, of, there's a picture of Malcolm circulating around of him doing that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So... But in I mean, the early days, but before he made after, after, of course, the famous picture, I think he was in Egypt, Egypt. when he was actually in, in, in uh, uh, making dua. dua. You know, and, so. and that came from Imam Warthi Muhammad. That's right. Imam Warthi That's Muhammad right. started to school Malcolm, mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. some of the great scholars. Mm -hmm. He started to school them into Islam proper, taught mm -hmm. them how to make salat. Yeah, there's a picture and here. There's, there's a good mm -hmm. picture of Malcolm and and uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Ma, 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 with their daughters, children. With their children. That's right. That's you right. Know? So they were close, and Imam Warthi Muhammad started to teach them about Islam proper. That's right. And they accepted the teaching, and that's where the conflict came in. In the nation of Islam, the minister was powerhouse. Mm -hmm. He wielded. Most of the power in the temple. Mm -hmm. What the minister said went. Mm -hmm. And he was like judge, jury, execution. Well, the nation of Islam, that was the uh, structure that we had. Mm -hmm. More military. With Islam, Islam proper, we started to learn that we have what we call sure account. Yes, sure, sure yes, mutual. Mutual, consult mutual consultation. consultation. Mm -hmm. The believers had to have had a say so in in the mosque, mm -hmm. and so the power was actually being taken away from the ministers per se mm -hmm. and given to the believers. Removing the headquarters, everything went to the headquarters. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. the, the temples themselves had more control over their uh, structure, wealth. How they yeah, they more control of their des destiny, own destiny, they, they control their own individual right. destiny. Right. They had, they had before, you, before you had to report to, shoot to Chicago, 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 number two. Everything went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Imam 
you start remove all of that, and some of the ministers balked at that. They didn't like that. So, and then the bowing down, making us a lot of humbling yourself. Some of them would not accept it. And that's where we had the division. But not one drop of blood was shed. Could have been. Could have been. Could have been. Could have been because it was such a drastic <laughs> could have change. Been. It could have been a different. And been. people were expecting that. Right. And the honor black mama passed. Who's going to be the new leader? Well, that kind of went back to what we were discussing uh, yesterday with brother, uh, um, uh, with our brother Lester, brother Lester Muhammad, who has the letter that was written um, from J. Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI when he said the death of the nation of Islam was going to be, you know, the economics, but also who was going to be the leader, breaking them up into factions, right. factions, right. division. Right. So when you say that they balked, some people balked at. I don't want to put my head, my 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 eight points of my body down in such death right. to humble myself to the Creator, not to a man, you know, per se. Or and I don't want to take on responsibility, right? More responsibility um, in terms of my faith, in terms of running the running the masjid, responsibly and accountable. Right. So they bought they balked at it, and which led to eventually some of some of those ministers. Who were there lifting up right. Imam Muhammad, who spoke before Imam Muhammad, because it's a long speech. Everyone yes, just talks was. about Imam Muhammad's speech, which was, of course, Far the very Khan, the, all of the Farrakh Khan spoke, uh, all the ministers from all the regions spoke. Right, the main region, All right. the main regions spoke. Right. Uh, you had uh, Jesse Reverend Jesse Jackson, the Rainbow Push yeah. Coalition, give his salam, give his peace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you had uh, Muhammad Ali, yeah. who gave his, his, record, his, his support, pledged his allegiance. Yeah. To while and he stood with with the transition from that point. Yes, he did. One is one of his strongest, one of the many strongest followers of of the Imam's leadership. And then, of oh, course, Ali. you had the 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 representative of the Arab League. Yeah, the Arab League. There. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who said? Who they said that this? Yo, y'all yeah, got it, man. He's the leader. Yeah, even the Arab League, they supported Imam Warthi Muhammad because they felt that he had the language and he understood the Quran and he was the leader for the Muslims over the whole world. That's what they were actually saying. And a lot of those ministers, they pledged that allegiance. And, uh, and like I said, I was there. He was and president. It was, it was, right. I was there. And it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful. And then when the Imam spoke, quite naturally, his language was totally Give the friend. And what he did was he taught us that Master Farad Muhammad was not God. Mm -hmm. He was not a God in the first. Mm -hmm. And he began to unravel some of the language that uh, the Honorable Black Muhammad was teaching. And he said, You can't blame my father because he was only taught what Master Farad Muhammad taught. That's him. right. He was only a student. He was only a student. He was only a student absorbing what the teacher was saying. Yeah. And he only spent some a few years with him before he Three disappeared. Years, right. And he said he's going to come back and the Honorable Black Muhammad was waiting for him to come back. <laughs> he's up in age. And then quite naturally, as the Honorable Black Muhammad got older, he got sick. Sicker. Yeah. He could not control some of the temples. It was just too much for him. Right. And things started to go downhill for those the latter years when Elijah was getting up in age, yeah. getting sicker, right. you know, and then things were getting a little loosey goosey. Yes, it was. You know, in terms yeah. of the ministers not doing what they were supposed yes. to do, yeah. or not doing what essentially the mission of the nation of Islam right. was supposed to do, and giving more to material material, material gain, you know what I'm saying, and material look and wealth versus the regular, I mean not the regular, but versus what we saw right here. We started out with do for self. And like another thing that the ministers, like you say, the mm -hmm. nation of Islam, actually corruption crept into the nation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Corruption kept crept into the nation and they lost the, the moral structure, mm -hmm. the righteousness. So mm -hmm. what attracted me was we were taught that for yourself, we are righteous Muslim. We are righteous Muslim. Mm -hmm. And that's what spurred me, righteousness. Morality, those things attracted me. But then, as the Honorable Black Man got up, 
then the material things came in. Like the imam said, the imam said he came in one time and he saw some of these ministers wearing chinchilla coats. <laughs> now you can know that. Chinchilla coats and minks. They wearing chinchilla coats and minks. And he said, what has happened to his father of movement? Yes. yes. And then he began to unravel that. And a lot of the men, and he, his life was threatened, but he had no fear. He had no fear. He felt that God was with him and he was going to take uh, Elijah, Elijah Muhammad's followers into Al Islam proper. Mm. And I survived the transition. What we say, the transition. Yes. Some people didn't survive. Yes. The York minister, Sylvester Lee, did not survive mm. the transition. He wow. did not survive the transition. Mm. And he started following other leaders that deviated from the uh, of Ma uh, mm -hmm. uh, War of the Muhammad, Wild mm -hmm. of Muhammad. So some of them didn't make it. But believe me, it was a transition for the better. And now that we are on the straight and narrow path, we have the teachings, commentary, mm -hmm. the life that I've actually witnessed Man wore the Muhammad. If you look at his pictures when he took office, and I've been with him since to his death, mm -hmm. and I can see mm -hmm. him age. Mm -hmm. Now, I was not in Chicago, and I was not around. Mm -hmm. Man wore the Muhammad and some of his great sure. imams, ministers. Sure. So, how did I learn his teaching? I bought his books. I bought his tape, mm -hmm. I bought his lecture, mm -hmm. and I bought the lectures of some of his great imams, so to speak. So, though I was not in Chicago, mm -hmm. I was there through modern technology. Right. I have a library of imams' books, imams' tape, some of his great imams and ministers. I study them, and actually, I was with, I was being taught by Imam Warthi Muhammad, though I wasn't in his physical presence. Right. But there was time I was actually at his when he spoke in mm -hmm. Chicago. But I learned through books and lectures and tapes. And that's really how we get educated. We have to understand that the Bible, the Quran, they were written how many years ago? Thousands. Thousands of years Thousands ago. Of years ago. <laughs> but we still read them. And we still learn from them. So how come and man in his knowledge, he has libraries. And the people that put those books in libraries, you can go back and read. It's like talking to them. So we have to understand, even though it's an old book, what we say something old, there's knowledge in those books. And we should, if we want to speak to these leaders, Pick up their books, pick up their lectures and their knowledge and read them, mm -hmm. and then you understand. That's what the Quran is all about. That's what the Holy Bible is all about. Mm -hmm. That's what the Torah is all about. Mm -hmm. And a good example, the Jewish community. That's my mm -hmm. uh, cell phone prayer time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the Jewish community, they put their Jewish faith first. Absolutely. To show you how important religion is in their life, and by them doing that and and molding their community on their faith and everything following that, mm -hmm. look at the great influence that the Jewish community has mm -hmm. in society. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a difference who's in the White House for them. Well, the Imam said that you know we shouldn't worry about the next president. We should be worried about uh, who our next Imam. Our next imam is going to be. That's what he said. The power. That's the power. God's word should be your guiding light. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you are on what we call the straight and narrow path. Mm -hmm. So Islam started, and there was actually an Ahmadiyya community here too at one time, mm -hmm. but they weren't they, they weren't as influenced as the nation of Islam. We made a heck of an impact in this city. We had a fish program, 
We had mm -hmm. Thomas Peak newspapers would be sold. We had a whole program here in your PA. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that were in fluent. They'll tell you. They went to the temple. And their and their eyes were open. They may not attend the temple on a regular basis, excuse me, but it enlightened them to become, it gave them a different outlook on life. Mm -hmm. And they became men and women prior to uh, what they were living. They quit smoking, they quit drinking. They uh, took care of their children. They followed the teachings, though they didn't come to the temple all the time. So we have a great history, and Europe has a great, rich history of Islam in this city. We influenced a lot of people. Matter of fact, we took a bus trip. Mm -hmm. We took a bus trip, and the mayor at that time, Mayor Marshall, mm -hmm. we took a bus trip where we took the mayor of York to, to meet uh, 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 Muhammad Ali. She mm. was on the bus with us, and we introduced her to Muhammad Ali, and she pinned the white rose, the white rose mm. uh, symbol. She pinned that pin on the lapel of Muhammad Ali. I think it was Mayor Marshall. A lot of people remember the female mm. mayor here in York. So she, we were respected by the uh, the city mm -hmm. because uh, the city leaders respected us because they knew that we were decent, upright, hard striving people, and that, that was the one thing that I, I remember too. We took her and sports she with pickle paint <laughs> to meet Muhammad Ali and uh, pin the white robe pin uh, on his lapel. So we were very. Um, uh, very influential in the city of York, and Islam is here to stay. Believe me, Islam is here to stay, God willing. And uh, we hope to be what the Imam did. He took us out of that uh, white racism, mm -hmm. and he understood. He taught us about the uh, that Islam has no racial mm -hmm. uh, overtones in it. Mm -hmm. We we uh, Islam represents the whole planet. And uh, once he gave us that understanding, even calling the white man the devil, he became devil not so much by his color, but by your behavior. Mm -hmm. And you can find a devil in any color nowadays, so it doesn't make a difference in what skin. So he brought us out of all of those kind of things from a separate, you know, we're only black to come, and he opened up the doors to everybody, and that's what Alex Brown is. So I think I covered just about everything. Yeah, I just wanna you know, um, time we have. Just and wanna just just tell, show the people some of these yeah. these Ali books. Yeah, Ali was a great he was a great follower of the Almighty Lord Muhammad. I mean, he helped propagate the faith. Ali raps. It's Ali rap. Now I got these books from uh, Ali's Good Stuff Cheap. They sell books in their store, you know, and they had these books on their shelf. And when the, when Ali passed away, they took these books and they put them up on the counter so that they was they were sure to be they would move and sell fast. So they put them up on the counter. And like he said, there was a book of him, Ali Rat, and there's pictures of Ali um because he was a great supporter of Imam for mm -hmm. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And um uh, and uh, yeah, 1960 Muhammad Ali at the Olympics. 1960. Some classic pictures in here. Classic pictures in that book. I bought them all. All the books that they had, mm -hmm. I bought them. So I have them. And uh there's a book here. Um some there's a pictures. And that one, Life and in Pictures of Muhammad Ali. And then Life Magazine, yeah, some of the different pictures. And there's a, I want to read this one thing. The ball. And the, and the, so uh, Ali Raps. Ali Raps. If you can hold that. Yes, yes, yes sir. Hold that for me. And what that says is read that, brother. It says, The first person I ever knocked out was my mom. Baby Cassius accidentally hit his mother in the mouth 
loosening two front teeth that had to be pulled. Isn't that something? <laughs> he knocked his mother's uh, front teeth out <laughs> at the first. And then oh. there's a picture of the bicycle that oh, yes. was stolen. The red bike? That was stolen. That he was going to whoop who stole it. <laughs> that book of rap, that you'd be said he was a poet. You know he was a poet. Yes, over that, 300 rap rhymes in this book. Someone took out the time to put those in a collection and... Uh, and I bought, I, I think I got three or four. I bought them all. I bought all the ones that they had at uh, Ollie's Good Stuff Cheap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ollie was, some, Ollie was something else. He was good, he was some, and he became, and Life Magazine did a very beautiful picture. And you should try to track these down and put them in your archive. Because, and he's known throughout the world. I mean, you know, who doesn't know Muhammad Ali. And what made him great was Islam. That's right. That's right. He was he was walking name? walking walking dawah. He was walking dawah. Because of his name, but also his he, he practiced mm -hmm. under water. Yes. He was he, classic picture here. He was box. Underwater. And that's what made him such a uh, dynamic uh, boxer. He went over and beyond the call of dude. And of course. Let's not forget our brother, our beloved brother, uh, Imam Michael, Mike, Michael Michael Sahir yeah. out of Indianapolis, who wrote yeah. this book, uh, The Man Behind the Men, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and his influence on these four men Imam Warafi Muhammad, Al Haj Malik Al Shabazz, Minister Louis Farrakhan, and Muhammad Ali. It's a great book. I would say it's a great book for those who are not too familiar with the Nation of Islam and want a a good reading. It's a it's a, it's a solid reading. It's about uh, three about yeah about three hundred pages or so of reading. of reading. But it's definitely a good start. A good start into your growing an understanding of the evolution of the Nation of Islam and a little bit more about Elijah Muhammad. And his influence on these four men, which we hear about a lot. Right. You know, you hear about a lot, but you, 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 we do know there was a teacher behind these men. These men reference this this brother right here a lot yeah. in their life. Yeah. He had an in, impactful, um, impactful uh, demeanor, impactful spirit, even though, again, he wasn't the tallest of men. By no physical right. stature, right. he was skinny. Third grade education. Third grade education. Third Cannot grade forget education. that. He had a third grade education. He wasn't the smartest, smartest of them all. However, he definitely um, had the spirit for the movement. Had the spirit for the movement because why? He saw his people in the condition that they were living yeah. in. In, the, in these urban, bigger urban and smaller urban communities That's across what, this country. That's what motivated That's what motivated him. That's what really kept him going. Yeah. You know, him coming from... Deep step Georgia in the South, rural, rural as it could be, rural as it could be. Yeah. Clara had a fifth grade, if that education. His wife didn't have much education in him either. He saw hangings. He saw hangings. All of those things that we, my demographic age group, did not witness. But pioneers like himself and others who witnessed these things were traumatized by what they saw. Yeah, they were traumatized. You know, they were traumatized and they were looking for, well, if this country is going to do this to us, what can we do to help our people? Yeah. If this country is not going to help us, if this country is not going to give us any financial help, how do we give ourselves financial help? Yeah. That's what we talked about yesterday with Brother Lester with the fish. And you touched upon it too, Brother John, with the fish market. Yeah. The, I mean, the fish, the fish, the fish detail. All the brothers who were given employment, who were employed, who didn't have work, who lost jobs or were searching for work, young men, adult men, come, the selfish, you get paid, you know, you raise money for the mission. You know what I mean? We, we do all of this. Yeah. We yeah. do all of this. Yeah. And I tell people, you know, it can be done because I had eight children. Mm -hmm. My wife did not work out the house. Wow. She did not work at the house. Eight children. Eight you worked children. the Caterpillar job full time. And then you ran, ran John, Brother John's grocery store. That was open seven days a week. Wow. 365 days a year. Wow. It was open because the community needed the store. Right. That's why I stayed open. 
Right. And I even I even offered the, the uh, women in mm -hmm. uh, Parkway credit, mm -hmm. basic things, milk, bread. Mm -hmm. They would run out of milk and bread. Certain customers, I would have they would have a tab where they could mm -hmm. get credit, mm -hmm. and they would pay their bills faithfully when their food stamp came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because then they had the food stamp program. Sure. You know, sure. Well, it, it goes back. It goes back to that. But yeah. I established a relationship mm -hmm. with my people because I knew my people. Sure. Yes. And I employed some of the young girls and students from the Parkway. I had an adult and mm -hmm. I always had a youth mm -hmm. working in there. And a lot of those youth that worked in Brother John's grocery, they bought their school clothes that their mother didn't have to buy school clothes for them. That's the impact that Brother John grocery had. But I was there to what? Serve my people. That was the main thing to serve. Mm -hmm. I provided service to my people. Mm -hmm. I can recall, and I'll never forget it. I'll recall, recall a uh, gentleman came to my store wanting to sell cigarettes. <laughs> now he said, Brother John, I know you don't <laughs> want to sell cigarettes. He said, I'll put a machine in and you won't have to touch the cigarettes. I'll just give you the money out of this machine. Like a vending machine. Like a cigarette. vending machine. You want to put a vending machine in mm -hmm. my store. Mm -hmm. Now, you know how much cigarette, and a lot of people say, why, well, Brother John, look at the money you can make. But that wasn't the issue. No, that was not the issue. I was dedicated to helping my people. And a lot of those vices are people didn't need anyhow. And it worked because I felt that God sent me customers. And I'll tell you this, another story. I was doing so much business at mm -hmm. a neighborhood grocery store, mm -hmm. doing so much business, so much food stamp business, I got audited. Now, how many times will a little neighborhood store get audited? Because of the amount of food stamp business I was doing, because a lot of people in public housing, they got food stamps. Right. So they right. bought a lot of groceries at my store. Right. I was doing so much business for a neighborhood grocery store, mm -hmm. they sent an auditor to audit me. They felt that I must be what they call buying food stamps, trading food stamps for money. Some of these stores do that. Mm -hmm. You go there and you give them, you give them, say you give them um, a fifty dollar worth of food stamp, and they'll give you twenty five dollars cash. They do that today, probably what they call buying food stamps, yeah. trading food stamps for yeah. money. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of food stamp business that I was doing, they felt I had to be doing something illegal to be doing that much money mm -hmm. in food stamps. Mm -hmm. They sent an auditor to my store. To audit me. I had to take off from Caterpillar and sit down with this auditor. After he got done auditing me, now he didn't know me from Adam, but he said this to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, Brother John, you keep excellent records. Mm -hmm. And I learned to keep records because I was good at math, but I was a secretary of the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was secretary of the temple. Mm -hmm. So I knew how to keep records. Mm -hmm. And he said this also. Brother John, you keep excellent records and you are as honest as the day is long. You ever heard that thing before? Mm -hmm. You are as honest as the day is long. He saw that I had a paper trail mm -hmm. that I rang up everything in my store. Mm -hmm. I kept receipts. I could prove my sales, mm -hmm. and I can prove my expenditure. Mm -hmm. And he said, Brother John, you are honest as the day is long. So that's, that's what? That says something about my character. That's right. And I got that, though so I always try to be a good individual, mm -hmm. but I got that honesty and integrity from the nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. That's what John Black Muhammad taught his followers. And the earlier followers, they had that. Mm -hmm. And then Imam Warthi Muhammad bringing us the Quran. That's what Islam is all about. Mm -hmm. Morality. Mm -hmm. Right doing. Right mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. Being honest. They say, 
But a Muslim, a Muslim is what? One who submits his will to the will of God. What does that mean, submitting your will to the will of God? I find a wallet or I'll find a, a store that the guy had all his night receipts and money in it. I find his pouch. Now, laying on, he dropped it. I picked that up. Now, the average individual following his own desire, bills need paid, I need this cash. The natural thing is to keep that money. Mm -hmm. But a Muslim, a Muslim, mm -hmm. what? He follows God's will. Mm -hmm. And what would God want me to do? Mm -hmm. Get that money back to his original mm -hmm. owner. That's just a simple understanding mm -hmm. of what a Muslim does. Mm -hmm. He follows, he sets his own personal will aside to do what? To follow the will of God. And you could say a Christian does the same thing. Jews do the same thing. So in reality, they fit the definition of Muslim, though they may not call themselves. That's right. That's right. It's plain and simple. That's right. That's right. And and, and it goes back also to uh, when you know, Elijah Muhammad had said to the mem membership in reference to even when you're working for so-called devil, devil, that you give him an honest day of work. Even yeah. though you... You're working for the person the that you may be calling the oppressor. And I mean, you still, you still got to work. Yeah. You still got to work and you still got to give that man an honest day of work. So a Muslim did eight hours work or eight hours pay. pay. He, was, he was on the job. He didn't shortchange him. No. Yeah. So we didn't believe in that. Yeah. We don't believe in shortchanging people. We don't believe in shortchanging our brothers and sisters. And we believe shortchanging anybody, you know, from the outside that, you know, yeah. Because that doesn't look right. See, that's that goes back to, again to the basic teachings of Al Islam right. on how to conduct our affairs. Yeah, Al Islam is a is a holistic way of life, holistic way of living. It is a wholesome way of living. So therefore, it addresses all of these issues that we're talking about right now. And yesterday, it addresses all of that. So when Imam Muhammad took office, he took office to again clean up. A lot of the things that we were affected by because of infiltration and also because of the effect of the of the culture. Yeah. During that time, 60s and 70s, you mm -hmm. had drugs. Yeah. You had switching the switching of drugs. You had heroin in the 60s, the 50s and 60s, then you had cocaine, yeah. then you had crack in the later in the 80s. You had all of these, all of these influence to get men and women, straight but men, away. men straight away yeah. uh, off off the path yeah. of what the nation of Islam was doing and had done and had achieved. Yeah. Then you had the music. Yeah. You had the music. The music was changing. The dress was even changing. Yeah. yeah. The skirts went up. The skirts were getting the amendment they said the Imam was saying the skirts would get shorter and shorter and shorter yeah. and shorter and shorter. Yeah. You know, so this is a, a a steadily showing you what? We're going to get you out gradually out of your moral character. Moral character. We're going to gradually get you out. Yeah. We're going to gradually we, we done, we took your leadership out. We 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 we, we assassinated. The, the strong presence of a, of a man, right. meaning that not just the male as a physical body, but the male symbolic of, le of good leadership. Sorry. That's good right. leadership. Good, healthy leadership. Holistic leadership. You know, this is what, this is what the nation of Islam produced in terms of healthy leadership, you know, and the other leaders like my, uh, Dr. King and yeah. others who were, even though not Muslim, had in their nature, like we said, just said before, you just said before brilliantly, that, that Muslim nature, yeah. that Muslim nature is in touch with their, in touch, they were sincere, sincere fighters, sincere men and women who fought for the same thing. Can we please establish ourselves here as a people? Yeah. This yeah. is exactly what they fought for. Yeah. And, you know, um, all of these things around us in this beautiful exhibit that we have displayed here um it's all it's all uh it all adds up to where we are now 2021 that's my point all of this is not was not done in vain you cannot tell us here that all these people who have died uh, was done in vain some are still living but who those who have died was this was not done in vain their works did not go in vain you know, we don't want them to, we don't, and in fact, we don't want to do a disservice by these men and women by letting them go to vain. Yeah. 
we stand on the shoulders of giants, believe me, we do. And we have a, we have a moral obligation to fulfill what they, they prayed for. They prayed for us to come out of the oppression that we were in and not take up arms, no. but educate ourselves. They, our parents, our poor parents and all these people, they did not talk to us about picking up arms against the Caucasian. None the of them. Soldiers. None of them. They, none they, of them, none of them picked up guns. No. None of them. We were, matter of fact, in the nation of Islam, we were forbidden to have weapons. We were forbidden to have weapons. That's what I was taught when I came to right. them. Right. We were forbidden to have weapons. And uh, like you say, mm -hmm. give the man eight hour work, eight hour pay. And uh, it was it was character building. And they put the man at the head of the household, but he respected his wife, she had to say so, and he took care of his family. And that's what we're lacking now. I think I heard something today where African American family is headed, like 70% of the African American family is headed by a single mother. Mm -hmm. No male figure in the picture at all. And that was done by design, I'm telling you. It was sure. not done accidentally. It, that was done by design. So we have to understand that there's forces out there working against the African-American family. Mm -hmm. That's why we're suffering so much. Mm -hmm. And we, as a people, we have to come together and reverse this. Mm -hmm. I explain, I, I, I mm -hmm. counsel a lot. A lot of people, you know, I counsel. And I tell young African-American men especially, even if you're not with your baby mama, that's the language they use today, your baby mama, <laughs> stay in touch with your children. <laughs> There's no reason why you brother can't go up to that school when that your child is acting up. Don't blame it on the mother. You go up to the school, even though you're not with your baby uh, 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 mother. They're your children. And when you go up there, believe me, them children will fall in line. But we lack that. Like I said, all I did was be a father. And my boys know I didn't play. Mm -hmm. And I was up at the school. I guided them. Mm -hmm. And though they made mistakes, they knew I didn't play. Mm -hmm. And I put principles in them. And now that they are men, they understand what mama and dad was trying to teach you. So you, battery runner, so mm -hmm. you brothers and sisters, you brothers especially, get on your job. Mm -hmm. All children love their parents regardless, mm -hmm. but you brothers have a great influence and you get out there and you get involved with your children's life. No, definitely, definitely. And we want to thank, uh, we want to thank our brother, beloved brother, uh, brother uh, Yahya Bilal out of here, out of Central PA, uh, more specifically here at York uh, for, for his sacrifice, uh, for his example that he's established and exemplified um, with his family, raising his family, being a man, being there, uh, inspiring his children, inspiring your eight children. Uh, we definitely applaud that. And that's something, again, we want to hope we want to show more example of that, of that realistically yeah. and actually the reality, not not through Hollywood and rely on someone else to tell us what our people have done or what they, you know, this, or reinforce stereotypes. Here we are, an actual brother here and other brothers and sisters who have done the same. same thing. They have done the same, same and they credit it. They credit their experience through the Nation of Islam, which gave them even more strength foundation. and foundation. To do the work that they that they are that they have done and they're doing now. Yeah. So we 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 appreciate uh brother Yahya for putting together his portion of this exhibit that we have here on display here in York, uh, and our at our digital learning um, community center um and that we are developing here at York, and we 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 hope that uh, soon that you all can come down and experience this. We wanted to bring it to you virtually because of COVID. A lot of people may be still, you know, not wanting to come out and be around a lot of people, which is understandable. Uh, we are taking this, the necessary safety precautions to make sure that, you know, we are COVID ready and COVID safe and, you know, just to protect everybody um, in that regard. But we are going to bring, be bringing this uh, exhibit here that we have shown you over the past two days. 
to different cities, God willing, inshallah, that's what we say, God willing, um, to other cities and towns across the country um, to show them this, this wonderful history by, again, compiled, preserved, archived by our brothers and sisters, our, our, our elders who have laid the foundation for us. And they, 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 they're holding on to these things so they can pass it down. That's this essentially what's was happening, and we're very grateful again uh, for you all. And we ask that you know you all uh, who are watching this now to again share share this with your friends, share this with your family. Um, all it takes is hit a share button on your Facebook page to share it to your friends, to your family. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, New Freedom Exchange with an X. Uh, like our page. Um, definitely stay tuned because tomorrow we'll be back with the culminating event for this weekend, which will be our community conversations with Imam Rashad Abdul Rahman of the Atlanta Masjid. Uh, we're going to be our part 3.0 of our Building Healthy Families uh, series, uh, focus on focusing more on, again, how we build that, how what does that look like in 2021, and we're going to take it to the next level, inshallah, God willing. Again, these conversations are not just for the benefit of the Muslim right. or the African American Muslim. This is the we put together this exhibit and this programming here for everybody to benefit of because everyone should want to know a little bit more history about Islam coming from the African American experience as it relates to our people. Because you could take something away from this precious history and apply it to your life. Yeah. We want to not convert people. We're not asking you to convert. We're asking you to. Uh, to come and witness good hospitality, as the Imam Muhammad would say that, you know, he was a very hospitable man. He was very highly respected uh, in the Christian world, in the Jew in the Jewish world, and just all, all over the place that he was just a highly respected man because he stood on principle. When you're a man of principle, people respect you regardless. No matter what religion, yeah. no matter what race, what color you are, it doesn't matter. What ethnicity you are, it doesn't matter. People will respect you regardless. And uh, is demonstrated, and again, by the example of the prophet. Point blank, yeah. period. Imam Muhammad yeah. said, don't look at me, look at the prophet. Because, yeah. Salam, because this is what I'm doing. What I'm doing is the work of spreading what the prophet has already established in his example as given in, in the Quran. Yeah. That's it. So with that being said, we thank you all for tuning in. And we hope that you join us tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we will have an update as to what time we'll be going live. There might be a slight change um, in scheduling tomorrow, so we let you all know this evening. And uh, have a great rest of your Saturday evening. Uh, peace and blessings. Oh.